And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Gears Pro League Split 2, day number six. I'm Taylor Reflections. I'm joined by Guy Blaze. First time we're casting together in over, well, I guess it's been about a month. Brother, I've missed yeah. you. How have you been? I've been great, Taylor, man. It's been a while since we casted, but I'm happy to be back with my duo and, uh, you know, cast some Gears action because I hope we get some good action today because I've seen a lot of 3-0s uh, when yeah. it comes down to our past standings, and I want to see who want to put up a fight today. Well, speaking of which, let's take a look at yesterday's results. You're right. We did have a lot of 3-0s. Team Queso, uh, obviously, being one of those teams that did struggle a little bit today. They're going to be playing against Fire and Ice. That's going to be a great matchup for what it's worth. I expect Team Queso to end up ahead there. Pittsburgh Knights and Rebel, though, going to be a banger. Two Latin America teams that always deliver when they play against each other. Hive, which obviously was purified, now playing against Discipline. That's going to be a great one. Hive yesterday played very, very well. I was super excited and pumped up to see, uh, see Gary hitting those shots that he was doing, but Pioneers and E United, my lord, that is going to be an amazing matchup. Those are your matches, at least for today on the broadcast schedule. And that last one, man, that last one is going to deliver. Yeah, no, it is going to deliver. Uh, and, you know, like you said, and another one I'm looking forward to is the Knights and a Rebel matchup. That's yep. going to be a fun one. So I, I don't think we're going to see as many 3 O's as we've seen in the past. And, um, I'm excited for that. Well, let's take a look at yesterday's results because they truly were uh, incredible. Despite three O's, all right. First and foremost, Fire and Ice Blaze gets their first ever win in Pro League since, obviously, that uh, that exploits Toady roster whenever they were representing FNI. Got to remember last season or last split, excuse me, Chavi and Co. did not get a single win. The only win they got was during the major, and that was during uh, against a challenger team. But they ended up taking the victory against Discipline. Congratulations to them, uh, Team K. So suffering a lost to pioneers but that one map that they played district was incredible i would love to see that represented today in their first series fury one beat by uh e united uh 3-0 obviously but fury one looks scary in that series even though it was a side station matchup despite the uh the escalation mm -hmm. but rise and hive 3-0 to be expected but hive played very well like i said gary was hitting some beautiful sniper shots blaze let's talk about the league standings though everything is shaking up quite nicely pk still in first yeah, PK is in first by only a little bit, okay? Yeah. You know, they are undefeated currently, but when you go through placings one through five, they're really only kind of separated by a loss, a loss or a win. So that can get jumped up today, going through tomorrow. We're going to see a lot of those great matchups to decide some of these tiebreakers that we have, and I'm excited for it. But for those teams seven through ten, they yeah. got to step it up. Yes, because the bottom two teams are going to be relegated, Blaze. So if they don't step Which it up, that they, exciting. it does. It makes it very exciting, especially when they play against each other, because we know what's at stake. We already saw one yesterday, right? That F and I matchup. But hey, regardless, though, these matchups are going to continue to take place. You're in Pro League for a reason, and you got to make the most of it. Let's just recap yep. one more time, though. It's been a little bit. Let's take a look at our broadcast schedule for today. Of course, Team Queso will play against Fire and Ice, Pittsburgh Knights versus Rebel, Pioneers at EU United, but that's not everything. We also have our side station going down, and that's going to be incredible. You got, I believe, one or two matches that's going to be taking place on the side station. It's going to be Hive and Discipline. Uh, maybe we'll have a chance to kind of peek in on that one and see how that's going to be going down. Well, you know, this side station matchup, Hive and Discipline, um, you know, if we get a chance to peek into it, I'll be happy for it. And we'll see if Discipline yeah. can um, get this taken care of, right? Ooh, damn, I look good. Okay. You look, hey, so please. I wasn't trying to give you the whole full we screen had to, on me though. just like that. But we had to. I know y'all missed me, you know? So hey. production said, let's give them a lot of plays <laughs> today. Blaze, you be looking fresh, man. I'm, I'm looking at your pictures on Twitter and Instagram and everything, bro. You, you post. Talking by the way, I'm joking. That was a great. Well, I don't even know what you said, but that was a great coffee talk you had with your father, man. Uh, that you oh, you heard on that? Instagram. I did. It was like 15 yeah. minutes. Super. Yeah. Very insightful, brother. Uh, I, I thought it was going to be, you know, like just a regular conversation, which it was, I guess, a which regular conversation with your father. But like, <laughs> it was deep. Like that was deep, man. But I loved it. I really enjoyed we got to chop up about it. We got to talk about it during a break after this first series. But I'm I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. You know? Yeah. Yo, no, I loved it. I really did. I thought, especially, I think there was a moment in there where you kind of mentioned um, breaking old habits and uh, mm -hmm. really, which which spoke to me because we all have habits in a certain way, whether they be good or bad. 
But I also like your dad gamers. saying, you know, when when bad things are happening, to take a look at the good as well, because you know that's that's an important thing. Because you know, good and bad, they have to coexist with each other. Like I said, it was really deep. I got to go back and re-listen to it. But I, I was I was impressed with it. But uh, is that going to be a common thing that you're going to be posting on your Instagram? Hey, you know, I, I hope it is. You know, hey, family is important. I love it seeing is. my family more. And you know, me and my dad, we could always chop it up and have some great conversations. And if it's good, you know, I'll put it back out there and see what other people can get from it. So it was definitely dope. And I'm happy that you enjoyed it. Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, you know me. I love talking. I could talk, talk, talk all day. <laughs> and your dad, too, man. He was a talker as well. So it just runs well, Now the you family, see where huh? I get it from, right? I do. I do. <laughs> and I love there was a moment in there. He, he called you brother. And then he's like, but you're my son, first and foremost. But we brothers, <laughs> too. So he, he was a funny guy, man. I, I liked him. What, uh, so speaking of which, Instagram, where can the, the people follow you and listen to you next time? Time. Yo, uh, Guy Blaze on all social media. You can find okay. me. And if it's not Guy Blaze exactly, it'll pop up. Like, you'll see me. It's this face. No one else has this face but me, okay? <laughs> Fair enough, man. But hey, it was really nice. Let's get into our first matchup, though. We got Queso obviously playing against uh, Fire and Ice, man. This is going to be a great one for a lot of different reasons. Plus, let's not forget Chavi versus his old roster. Uh, you know, hey, brothers are going to be at arms. It's going to be a yes. fun time. And both and both rosters have been incredible for what it's worth. And curious with Fire and Ice getting their first win, Blaze, how much that's going to impact their mentality in this matchup tonight. Yeah, I'm curious how it's going to impact them as well. You know, hopefully it's in a positive way. You know, you sure. get your first win. You and a squad, you know, you guys are out of that slump. So going up against the squad like Team K, so it's not going to be an easy feat, especially with vets on a team like Crystallize and Sleefer. So Fire and Ice, they got to show us what they're made of, okay? And like it is, they're going up against their old teammate in Xavi as well. So yes. we're, we're, we, we're, I'm pretty sure they want to get some revenge in this series. And um, it's actually going to be good. I don't know who's going to win this one. And I just remembered that I didn't give production my picks. So, <laughs> of course, it's coming on the fly. <laughs> Hey, we'll, we'll have to do it live, Blaze. Well, let's take a look at the Queso roster. We mentioned, obviously, one of those players, and that has to be Chavi. But Crystallized Sleeper and Problems have been incredible in their own way. And Problems has really impressed me. This split, Blaze, uh, truly instrumental in the success of Team Queso. Yeah, he truly has been, you know. And this is a player in which they need it because... When it comes down to, to Crystallize and Sleeper, we know that they can step up when a team needs them to, but they love playing around high talent, young slayers, players who can attract a lot of attention, which creates openings for them to do what they got to get done. So Xavi is that player for Team Queso. Um, but, you know, I want to see them starting to have some more success. and They're going to have to have it up against this Fire Knight squad right. because I, I know that they will, they're they they're not going to come out here and make this easy on them. Yeah, and you also mentioned, and wisely so, you know, for those bottom, I think it's what, seven through ten, they need to step it up. Bottom two teams do get relegated. Mm -hmm. Team Queso is one of those teams currently sitting at one and four. The only victory uh, they were able to get was against Discipline 3-0, but Discipline's been having a ton of struggles. I'd be really surprised if they do make it out of relegation. Discipline's in last place, so that's why I said you know i'd be really surprised to see them make it out in case in last place too pretty much exactly and fire and ice too so it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to work out fire and ice though is a talented roster let's take a quick peek at them because look we got to talk about obviously nash toxic solar and rapid solar yesterday was on fire i don't know if you had a chance to peek in and out but regardless though truly impressed with the way that he was playing i was also impressed with uh, rapid's ability to hold his 1v spot on training grounds during that escalation and uh, he needs to do that I constantly harp on the 1v players, Rapids being that guy. Uh, I think he's uh, excelling at that job, and whoever challenges to him today needs to be ready to roll. Yeah, they definitely need to be, okay? Because when it comes down to the core three of this team, Toxic, Solar, and Rapids, they're, they're very consistent, you know? And they'll push some squads to the wire. It just comes down to if they got the composure and the maturity to start closing out series. And hopefully coming off that win that they got yesterday that yep. uh, they, they're going to have that confidence to, to, to do so. Uh, they're going up against a squad in which they know they can beat. So um, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, they're going to be in full form today. Well, we'll definitely see. And you know what? We talked about Solar. And like I said, he tore it up yesterday. And I think he's going to be challenged quite a bit today by a man called Chavi. So let's look at Chavi and Solar a little bit closer. One stat that we did, or at least two stats that we ended up adding, is damage per 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, we can expect Solar to be getting about okay. 10,500 and Chavi getting 9,900. Not the most impressive in terms of 30th and 20th, but kill participation is something to take a look at. Now, mm -hmm. kill participation percentage 
percentage-wise, Solar is getting 28.5% of the kills on this roster. And then you have Chavi, who's getting 21.18%. I pumped up Chavi a lot, Blaze. We know I did, right? I called him at one point, you know, maybe the new dyslexic. He's definitely not that, but he's doing well for what it's worth. Solar, though, seventh when it comes to the league in kill participation. So he's mm -hmm. picking up the bulk of them, right? There's four players. 28% is more than one-fourth. So therefore, this man, if he's having a sluggish day, well, that's where Xavi can capitalize. Yeah, that is where Xavi can capitalize. And when I look at these numbers, you know, for me, Solar's numbers looks more wholesome, as I'll mm. say, okay? You know, I, 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 I can see the weight in those numbers and what he does for the team. And Xavi's a little bit more flair, you know? And, That's but, true. But, you know, one thing is, is that <laughs> when, when Xavi's moving all over the place and he's picking up his kills and he is attracting that attention... This squad is going to be the best, but, right. you know, that's give or take. You know, is he going to be hot today? Going to mm. be his old squad? That's the question. You know, I know he's comfortable against these guys. He used to that's shoot right. against them in the, in the King of the Hill lobbies, war enough for scrims. He know his, he knows his old teammates, but does. just because he cool with him don't mean that he's ready for this aggression they about to bring his way. <laughs> That's true, and I know he's not ready to lose to his old roster, too, right? There's always that mm -hmm. aspect when you switch rosters and you lose to them. It stings a little bit more than just losing to E-United or losing to Rebel, right? You always yeah, want to beat your just previous Just a little team. bit more. A little bit more, right? So I know Chavi wants to win. Let's take a look at our maps. One map that I wanted to see for Fire and Ice was District, and we will get that for map number four. They played that. I, I Seriously, man, I was so impressed with the way they played against um, I believe it was, well, regardless what their matchup was, man, it was I think it was against the United, but anyways, they played so very well uh, against that team on District. That's where I think they're going to excel. Um, but Reactor Control is also great. I think both rosters are pretty scrappy. They're younger. They like to get in your face. Reactor allows that. Yeah, Reactor does allow that. And, you know, Reactor is going to be um, a, a good first map for us to see who's really ready to come out and play in this series because you got to have a lot of composure when you play Reactor. Whole no setups, plan for the spawns. And, um, you know, making sure you are breaking these corner heels the right way. If not, you're giving up a lot of free times. Then you're spawning across the map. And, you know, by the time you're setting up, you're giving up heels. So, yeah. With that going into execution and harbor, really, reactor control is going to tell us the, the story of this series. Because I think that district control definitely go by the way of fire and ice. But it's going to come down to how they can perform in those first two maps. Absolutely. Yeah, first two maps are going to be key. I think it's key to win your first map in general. And I'm going to even harken back to Pioneers, man. Pioneers, you know, they're still a championship caliber roster. I've got a whole narrative, though, when we get to that matchup. But they always start off slow when it comes to split number two. Whether that's a brawny mm -hmm. issue or not, I don't know. But there are opportunities to take big maps off of big teams by starting off strong. And I think that does allow for Team Queso and Fire Nice to get the upper edge, not only on each other, but also other teams in the future. And Controlled seems to be where Team Queso and Fire and Ice excel at. So mm -hmm. it's going to be an explosive start, quite honestly, especially it, on React. It is. It is. And, and, you know, and that's one reason why I was kind of harping on that first map, because for me, both these squads are evenly matched. OK, sure. you're at the bottom of the barrel. I don't care, you know, what map you're good on. It, you know, it don't matter. It's how it you're going to play today in this series. All right. So it's how they're going to start, how disciplined their setup is going to be in their rotations on reactor control is going to tell us who's actually ready for this series. And it's funny because uh, right now I think Team Queso is ranked se uh, eight, and then you have Fire Knights who's ranked uh, nine. So whoever wins this, they're most likely going to switch. Well, they are going to switch places, right? And then one's going to avoid relegation, one's not. For Team Queso, they're already above F and I. If they take this victory, man, they're going to be mm -hmm. even higher up, and it's going to at least help them with the head to head. Head to head is going to be a big, big talking point, especially later on. We're already reaching to tell, and the major's not that far away, Blaze. Nope. So that head to head is going to mean everything just about. But it is going to be a great, great matchup. And speaking of which, Blaze, let's get into our predictions, brother, because I don't even know who you're going with. So this is going to be a bit fun. <laughs> I, I, you go I'm first. Gonna, I'm, I'm, exactly, I'm going to go first just to let you, you know, kind of solidify in your mind who you're going to be going with. Uh, this one seemed relatively easy for me, even though Fire and Ice got their victory yesterday and was truly impressed with the way that they looked. I think Team Queso is the better roster today. I do believe in them. I think, you know, as a whole, I, I really do. Crystallize and Sleep are incredible. Love what Problems has been doing. And Team Queso has been a little bit hungrier, in my opinion, as opposed to FNI has definitely mm -hmm. had their struggles. So I've got to go with Team Queso for this match anyways but fire and ice is definitely a close second who could take it all the way now blaze it's your turn and i hope you made up your mind 
Yeah, it is my turn now. Uh, and, I, and I have made up my mind, Taylor. <laughs> and like you say, it's pretty clear cut. Okay. You know, Team Queso, they're a good looking roster. All right. You got, uh, you know, problems with Shavi on the team. You got two veterans and crystallized and sleeper. And we all know how I love sleeper. Okay. First yeah. pick all star draft. All right. Um, 2018, you know the vibes. And um, Team Queso, they got this. You know, they're going to be gelling. They're going to be melting. They're going to be uh, doing doing a thing. But On doing. Even with that being said, I uh-huh. think that Fire and Ice got this one, Taylor, okay? Uh-huh. And, and I'm going with the boys today. Okay. Right? F and I, they got it. <laughs> I got to straighten up my jersey. I see that. Got the blaze and everything but on there, bro. I'm going with Fire and Ice today, you guys. It's all oh, with a big here. F and I. I want to show the logo off one time. This was not ready. Okay. This was not ready for the camera. It wasn't, but it's ready Spur now. Of the moment. Fire and ice. <laughs> I, I, I got to ask you, if you didn't have the F&I jersey, though, and you had a Team Queso jersey, who would you have went with? Still F&I? I'm, I, w- I would have went with F&I, but the reason why okay. I would have went with F&I is that, honestly, I think that when it comes down to, to rappers, uh, Rapid Solars and Toxic, yep. they won't revenge. But the one story that we even tell is Nash proving that he could play on this roster, okay? That's right. Proving that he can fill in Shavi's right. shoes and that he's not in his shadow and he's exactly what the team need. We've mm. seen Fire Knights rise to the occasion plenty of times before against tougher opponents. And True. I like the core three of this team rather than the, the duo and, and the new plus ones that they got over there on the side of Team Queso. Right. Fire Knights, they're going to be more composed in this series. And they're going to come out on top. All right, fair enough. Well, Fire Nice for you. Chat, who are you going with? Team Queso, F&I. It's one of those matchups I have no idea where they're going to be going forward. Uh, you know, I really don't think any of them are the favorites per se. Like I said, it's kind of split down the middle, 50-50. They both have the same record. One's above because of win percentage, but that's really it. So, Chat, who are you going to be going with? I kind of just took a peek, so I, I gave it away for myself. But I had to look. It's going to be Team Queso. And, and, and pretty well in favor of Team Queso. 150,000 to 25,000 channel points. But that doesn't mean anything. Team Queso, hey, oh. they're going to have to work hard for this, brother. We gave a lot of great points. Solar having that team kill percentage at 28% really spoke volumes to me. And his performance yesterday, Blaze. F and I could very well win this. So this is one of those matches. That they it's will. Just a toss up. <laughs> they will. They will. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> watch, watch. The series going to kick off. But we'll see how it breaks down, okay? Both these squads <laughs> want a lot. Um, our predictions are our predictions, but, you know, we'll see how the players are going to come out here and play today. You know, Team K, so, you know, when it comes down to Chris Lies and Sleeper, they haven't stopped the grind, okay? Right. Um, and they have been playing with multiple, a multitude of different players um, over these last two seasons and just trying to find duels that work. But... Uh, you know, and I, and I like to do it as Sunday squad, but is it a team that's ready to win a major? They got a lot of work to do, and they need to come out here and absolutely destroy Fire Nice. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, when we get to execution, it's going to be interesting to see who ends up ahead. I think both F and I and Team Queso have had their struggles there. Team Queso more so, I believe, just because their ability to respond. Choppy's been getting caught up on just, you know, straight ahead instead of watching his flank clock tower is a big issue uh luckily we don't see clock tower here we will get check out and tomb i think those are perfect maps from both of these rosters yeah because they, they're kind of straightforward you know you meet in the middle now of tomb or maybe you fight for the torque it's a little bit more versatile but check out check out is check out and it's just that headbutt fight down and check out stand so i think all of these maps today allow just fire and ice team case so to just go at it and that's what we want for both these squads, okay? We want a clean fight to kick off the, the show today. Uh, and, and, and both these teams about to battle it out. Get ready, folks. It's Fire Nice versus Team Queso. Going to kick this one off with problems. Going to start some problems by getting into the hill first, Taylor. Yep, getting into the hill. And that's going to be Team Queso, at least at the moment. But that kill feed is all fire and ice, all blue. And for good reason, three players already down. Problems makes the fourth. Even though Team Queso gets those early points, Fire and Ice's Lancer Fire Team Fire was incredible in that initial fight and allowed them to not only get Nash with the Torque, but also get the first team fight win against TQ. Well done, Nash in center with Torque, getting pressured up. He is getting peppered up and forced to back all the way up, give up that middle portion. That's going to allow Chavi to get that Lancer Fire into the center hill, which obviously F and I is currently at Nash. Only two more Torques to his name. Yeah, but great initial here for Fire Nice, and Nash is going to move in, get one, 
Work with a squad to take down problems with two back A's. He gets a double, sets his team up for a 1v1. But Nash moves in, some beautiful shots. He gets a me shield. He's going to take cover. What a scrappy start, but the reason why Iron Nice is in this position, they hit patience, okay, to kick off this game, and they set a perfect trap for Kesa. Perfect trap indeed. And right now, obviously, the edge has to go over towards Fire and Ice. Team Kesa, though, established itself early on inside the hill. Fire and Ice on the outside looking in. Solar not having a good time. Neither is Rapids. Second team fight, or at least the third one, looks to be going to the way of Team Kesa. Crystallized getting aggressive. He wants those finishes. I don't blame him, but he's on the hunt, and he is chasing Toxic down. My only worry is Team Kesa might be getting too overzealous. Well, you know, they did a good job. They wanted to get that kill, and also they were going to be able to push out the spawn and set up. But they did prep. They backed out at the right time. As the spawns came in for Fire Nice, you do see a kill get traded out, but majority of the kills coming in for Fire Nice, he was able to catch those two players off guard. So ultimately, in hindsight, Taylor, they were too overzealous in that fight. And now they're starting to pay for it. As you're going to see, F and I with the setup. They got all four players in front of them. As Problems is going to try to follow up with Shavi. Solar is the target. Some great shots. The down is there. The kill is cleaned up, but two traded out for Fire Nice. They see the double. Uh, scary move for Nash, but he gets taken out. Turns into a 2v2 fight. Now, what's scary is the, the Fire Nice fans now, they may be feeling comfortable as the heel right. is going to settle and the fight's going to settle as well. So I want to go back in time just a little bit. Team Queso getting overzealous, pushing Toxic, and then ultimately running into all four members from Fire Nice who are off the respawn. That's something that has been hurting Team Queso, especially, especially when it comes to escalation. Team Queso has to be comfortable in their ability to hold onto a hill without getting overzealous, without being over aggressive. I understand that they want to get in your face and they just want to kill you, right? That's something that Team Queso was great at doing. They had the mechanics to be able to do so, Blaze. But Team Queso so runs into the problem where they get overzealous, they get too reckless, and then ultimately end up doing themselves in and giving the advantage right back. So for Team K, so I want to see them pump the brakes a little bit. I'm impressed with their mechanics, but honestly, they don't need to flex it as much as they try to. All right, let's see. As they enter this fight, you're going to see First Blood goes in the way of Fire and Ice. Problems. We'll see if he can trade out there with Toxic, as you'll see the pinch there coming in from the right. The revives are there, but this is actually where Problems need to land throughout the support his two teammates over here, just putting out some damage, keeping that pressure on him. And you see how he's trying to, Taylor, but Toxic on the left, trading out those shots back, keeping his head down, allowing it to be a 3v2 team fight. Team Queso picks up two. Rapids will find one, and it's a 2v2 currently in the hill. It's fire nice. We're gonna back, they're gonna back down just a bit. As I say that, they step up, knowing that they got the response, but a mm. huge play from Problems. And Problems makes plays like that consistently, Blaze. And that's why I love watching him play and why I believe in this Team Queso roster. Problems not done just yet. He's got Nash and the rest of F and I in front of him. Great Lancer fire. Solar in no man's land. He's going to be finished off. Nash now forced to take where Solar was currently at, opposite of Sleeper. Can't really push up. At this point, Team Queso, they've got this hill on lock. Toxic in a really tough spot, getting peppered everywhere he goes. But Crystallize getting too aggressive, trying to push up onto Rapids. But Problems on the flank, takes one, takes the second. And Problems continues to get maximum value from his life. Solar, though, getting the torque bow and getting out could be a big positive for the next hill for FNI. It was. It wasn't the worst thing in the world for Fire Knights as, they, as those last few players died. You had a uh, Solar off the respawn, get a power weapon, and also the rest of the team got some good respawns across the map. That was a good revive coming in, keeping the numbers advantage in favor of F and I. Nash takes down Crystallize, and F and I gets set up. But as I say, a sleeper is going to be sneaky in the middle. Solar snipes him from downtown. Fire and I still feeling comfortable in this moment. Waiting for the rest of the squad to group up with them, Taylor, and they are on their way. The last bow will connect, and Solar is going to keep that man advantage in favor of his squad, and that should he just equate to more points. It should equate to more points. Still relatively close, 130 to 70. F and I, though, has put themselves that they can find success not only in this hill, but also the next one. I expect the next one to be a little bit more successful for, from them just because of where it's going to be located. This one is a bit hard to lock in, but they've done a great job doing so. I must say, Crystallize trying to make some moves. Chavi, too, but they should end up both dying, and they officially do. Problems, though, finds a way in, but now he's going to find a way out due to Fire and Ice just isolating him and eliminating him. Team Queso now has to really think, do we want to continue? 
continue to try to fight for this hill. It's 40 seconds for Torque Bow, but you got to be thinking about the point disparity at this point, Blaze, because now Fire and Ice has taken a tremendous lead, 160 to 70. That's 90 points, and that's not easy to overcome, especially if that FNI starts to break away the 200 point mark. Yeah, it won't be easy to overcome at all. And Fire and Ice, uh, I'm liking their teamwork a bit better in this in this uh, in, in this matchup, and it's showing in the scoreboard. Now we know that that bow is gonna be up soon. It is being watched by Sleeper across the map, but he's in no real position to kind of contest it. I think this bow will get picked up for F and I as Team K. So they have to worry about the early setup on the hill. They just gotta dodge some torque rolls in this type of situation, Taylor, because they are down. They can put all their resources in play to fight for this bow and, and then not get no time on this hill. So they make the right call, but this is where it gets tricky. It does get tricky. It does get tricky. And Team Queso is a team that, again, when everything is going right, they excel. When things get a, uh, start to get a bit choppy, that's when they get a bit discombobulated. So right now is going to truly test them. Now, granted, they've cut that lead from 90 now down to just 60. Great from them. That's a 30-point difference. But still, they've got to be successful on this current hill. Crystallized. Oh, well done. That's Solar and Rapids. He kills off and gives them a great position onto Toxic. Excellent job. 30 seconds potentially going to the way of Team Queso. Fire and Ice. They've got to think twice if they want to continue to push for this next hill, and I don't think, well, no, looks as if they're going to be actually pushing in, but Chavi isn't going to allow it, but misses the shot on Nash. He gets taken down, and Fire and Ice are able to inch closer and closer. Yeah, just a little bit closer, but if Problems can get this kill, he puts his team in a great spot, but he gets taken out, and Fire and Ice will get the rest of the scrap time. They're going to start rotating on over towards next. The closest player is going to be player three. Shot grenades will get picked up by Fire Knights in just a bit. Nash going to be on top of them. The rest of the power weapons won't be up here for a bit. Problems revived right away. But you see Solar takes action, Taylor. Moves in, gets the kill, holds his right hand. His teammate takes a wider angle, and the pinch works out perfectly. They make quick work of Team Queso. Quick work of Team Queso in a moment where it matters most. 60 seconds remaining on this hill. You stop Team Queso once again. Fire and Ice are going to be cruising to 300. That shock is going to be great for blocking the left lane. Nash has an opportunity to get out, but Rapids was just absolutely beaming him, but it's all right. He gets back into the fight. Team Queso does find real estate in the new hill. But are they going to make the most of it? What well, seems to be the case at the moment. Solar, though, needs to make some massive plays. And he's going to get a couple of downs. But due to the chain revised from Team Queso, pays dividends. And obviously, Team Queso has themselves inside the hill. Actually, no one's in the hill. They all hop out to go to go kill Toxic. And because of that overaggression, now you got Chavi last alive in the hill. And Fire and Ice has a full frontal pu uh, push with three members. That overaggression, again, they need to taper that off. And a bow, that's a good one for the splash damage. He calls out to his teammate that he's weak. Nash knows they keep the distance, clean up the kill. But they need a quick turnaround. Beautiful shots from Krista. But Toxic and Rapids will be able to relax in the hill and collect on the rest of this time. As I see just 14 seconds of scrap time remaining, you will see Team Queso rotate the map and get set up on next. But the spawn is being taken, it has been taken over by Fire Knight, so. That's going to give them a, a, a great chance to flank in and get that pinch and also separate this and make it two 2v2 fights as the bow's going to miss. Shavi backs up, hits a great shot. Now he can join his teammates at the actual hill. He's going to give them a numbers advantage, but they still need to dodge those bows from Rapids in the middle. Dodge the bows. Well, Rapids is down, so that's going to be great news for Team Queso. Rapids might get picked. That nope, Chavi's going to be there anyways, but he does backpack the Torch Bow. He also had a shock on him as well. That shock could have been great. So right now, Team Queso, they've got tremendous influence on this next fight with 60 or so seconds remaining. It's going to be a straight-up 2v2, which uh, Team Queso needs Ooh. to push. Well done Ooh. from Chavi. Huge two-piece. And the reason why I said they needed to push right then and there is because there was a bit of a refresh coming in the form of Rapids. So it could have been a 3v2 but I love that Xavi confidently pushed in, got the two-piece, and gave Team Queso the real estate they needed to hold on and maybe even take the lead for the first time in this map number one. Also, what makes that, that uh, you got to give Xavi some credit too because he had great awareness. He knows at this level, once the flashes and the smokes are tossed, the play is going to be made, and that was going to be on his teammate. And he had perfect timing um, before his opponents can execute that play to find himself in that double and catch him off guard. So... Some um, high-level plays coming from him, but on the flip end, 
Team Queso. They got two members down to fire nice and they started to collect on some much too needed time. And this is pretty much going to make it a tie game after it's all said and done. And, and if you're a team, if you're on Team Queso, it gives you a little sigh of relief. But you know, the job is not done just yet. Rapids moves in for that 1v1. Wants to clean up. It's only a little bit of scrap time, but Nades may be down there for him to play and pick up as well. And it was, so that's a big 1v1 for him. But Bowles is going to miss out. Crystallized presses again, trying to catch his opponent, switching between weapons. He can't get it done, but on the flip end, Taylor Shavi, he's keeping his heel neutral. And he is scaring away these Fire and Ice players. As he needs to. Chavi is a guy that we expect to step up. We looked at the head-to-head -head stats between him and Solar. Solar outdid him with, I believe, a 28%. Mm. Uh, you know, a great nade, by the way, from Rapids. Rapids obviously showing his value. That swings the fight back in F and I's hands. But as I was saying with Chavi, he only had 21%, but that's still a tremendous amount given the fact uh, Fire and Ice obviously has four members, 21%, nearly one-fourth. And there it is, once again, getting another elimination to complement or at least counteract that two-piece that Problems was able to get just a bit earlier with the nade, and Chavi continues to tear it up. He's on a streak at the moment, I believe. He's at least got four kills to his name so far with the one life that he's had. Team Queso cruising to victory. Fire and Ice, though, going for the break. So this is uh, a quick push that needs to come through for Fire and Ice, knowing that they got the numbers advantage. They do get there in time. They catch a member off from Team Queso. Sleeper tries to get another kill. He couldn't, and now Crystallize is taken out. Good execution from Fire Knights, because honestly, Taylor, they couldn't hesitate. If they hesitated one second, then you would have saw that uh, player off Team Case to respawn and join his team, and the defense would have been a lot harder to break. So, great heads up play from Fire Knights, but now as we rotate on over towards next, they will be down by nine. On board with Sleeper, has a great angle. Put some shots in on Rapids already, but he's going to back up, hold a more difficult spot, but more importantly, he joins his teammates, and now he can get back into the mix. Shotty out. Soaking up a lot of damage, but the shot grenade comes out, blocks off Krista in a corner, but he hits a nice blind fire, has some extra shots from Xavi, and they will win that battle. Rapids is the last one left, and Rapids, he can't do much. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I don't know. I had a little faith he could get that kill, but Chavi has heated up quite a bit, especially as we get towards the later portion of this map. But it's not over with it. Uh, not over just yet, Blaze. Team Queso still has a chance to win this, but so does FNI. Problems, though, great connection across map with that Torque Bow. That's at least going to alleviate some of the pressure. I have no idea where he sent that one flying, but they don't have X-Ray, so problems thought there was somebody there. And I guess it's better to check it than to not check it and get blindsided. Yeah, you definitely do have to check that. Now, Sleeper checking his opponents at the front door. Lots of shots coming out. The damage is there. Looking for the kill cleanup on Rapids. He gets it and has help from his teammates to win the fight once again. They can win off this hill, Taylor. And it's been a very long time since Fire Knights has been able to get a point off a hill. They've lost these last two team fights and it's looking like they may lose a third. They're gonna have to run right into these to the Lancer Sleeper again. And he's ready for him. Picking up another kill. Nash, can he be the hero? Oh, for now he can. <laughs> Just for a second. Just no literally a second. But it's a race. It's a race. Oh, it's problems a got race. it. Problems they got can't it. Get to in time. <laughs> it was a race, though. I like that. That was a great map number one, as to be expected between these two evenly based rosters, as we pointed out in the beginning. Fire and Ice, though, controlled the majority of this game from mid, or at least from the uh, initial, from the beginning, all the way up to mid. But Blaze, uh, there was a certain point where Team Queso just turned things around, and uh, I hate to boil it down to one player, but Chavi was kind of that guy. Well, Chavi and Problems, I think, both really stepped it up, and it came down to simply just hitting your shots and winning your fights, man, and that's what Team Queso started to do. They started off lackluster, but once they started yeah. hitting those shots, brother, Fire and Ice couldn't keep up. Yeah, they they they, they really couldn't, and you know, it happened around, I want to say, Fire and Ice got up to about, it was 170 to about 80, and from there, everything kind of all started to go downhill. Team Queso, they found a flow, um, and, and, they, and they won some big fights during those corner hills, and their setups was great. So uh, Team Queso, they was able to get that one done. Yep. And, you know, it, it's off the back of a lot of big plays that Sleeper made, okay? You know, yes. he, once he once Sleeper is feeling comfortable and the defense is there, he's going to get a Make it the heal. Then once you get there, you got to deal with mm. crystallizing shabby shotgun at the front door, and it's hard to get through. 
I love that she called Sleefer checking IDs at the front door. And I'm like, would Sleefer make a good bouncer? I've never met the guy in person, yeah. Blaze. You say yes? <laughs> yeah, I think he would. I think he'd be a terrifying bouncer. He has a straight face. He, he does. Well, at least, well, see, I can only base it off the pictures Excellent that I line. see, right? But I mean, hey, Sleefer being that guy straight face, you come to the door looking cute, you think you're getting in for free. No, sir. Sleefer says, I need ID. You don't got that? Hey, you're not getting through this door. And with the way that I saw him being the bouncer on these hills, Blaze, Sleefer would terrify me, I got to say. Yeah, he, he should terrify you, Taylor, okay? <laughs> he is, <laughs> you, you, you do not get in without paying the toll and. Team uh, and Fire Nice paid the toll with their dignity in that first map. So Dang. they're going to have to recover going into map number two and uh, um, get some payback here in execution because when you come out of right. series, you know, you want to start hot, right? You want to get a lead and control. And when you have that, if you play, you know, some good gears, you should be able to keep that and um, roll it out to victory. But they crumbled early to kick off this series. And now we got to see how they're going to recover. Going into Tomb, that's going to be Execution. That's going to be a lot of fun. We do see quite a bit of Tomb come out from uh, uh, from Fire and Ice. I'll have to look at the stats for Team Queso, though. Last time they played on Tomb was against Rise, and it went to round 11. Fire and Ice just couldn't win that final round, but they could very well beat Rise on that map, which we know Rise is an excellent Tomb team. You know, at one point or another, you know, that cost them an MSP, but they managed to get better and better on Tomb, and they're just a great Execution team in general. So maybe Fire Nice has to leg up. I'm taking a peek, though, at Team Queso. I'm seeing Tomb once. They did win. Oh, twice. No, they lost to Rise 3-6. to six. So it's actually great. Okay. Fire Nice goes to a round 11 on Tomb against Rise, where Team Queso only goes to a round number 9 and loses 3-6. to six. So maybe, like I said, Fire Nice, they've got the edge here. Maybe they do, but I know one thing. An L is still an L. Let's see. Like that. There we go. All right. That's a fact. <laughs> and L is still an L at the end of the day. Uh -huh. And, you know, but did, one squad did play them a little bit closer. And um, Rise is a good benchmark, okay, to go into this map against them because they are a talented execution team. Sure. But when we come into it today, uh, I'm excited to see uh, who's going to take over when it comes down. Well, which squad wants to prioritize sure. Twerk Bowl or Sniper to, to kick this one off? Because we know it is a balance. Um, you know, some teams, they just, they, they like that slight fight a lot more. They see a few more openings around that tree area to, to get some first bloods and right. to find some openings versus other teams. They don't mind letting their, um, taking that 2v2 across map at the ball, picking it up quickly, playing back on that snipe and letting their torque bow player, uh, you know, slowly win them the game. I'm looking at Chavi and Problems very closely uh, for Team Queso here. I think they're going to be a big impact and have big impact plays. I'm also looking at Solar from Fire and Ice because Solar played so incredibly well before. Rapids obviously is going to be doing his thing, I believe, at least as a support player here. But we have seen him, as I complimented him in the pre-show, that I love his ability to hold his 1v spots. Either way, it's going to be a scrappy fight in mid. Nobody going for Torque Bow. Everything's centralized, which this has kind of been the new meta, if you will. Problems finds an opportunity to push Nash, and he's going to make the most of it. Gets to down first, or at least one player from both teams being dropped, but it looks like Team Queso is gaining the edge. They separate themselves, and Chavi also has a sniper. It's still a 3v3 on the map, and... Fire Nice, they're trying to stay composed behind this cover, but they are getting pressed out. They find themselves a down and create a separation. They get the double down because Xavi moves over for that wide angle, Taylor. And then Fire Nice, they continue to keep that tunnel vision. And they say, Oh, I thought he was going to do it. <laughs> he, he hit a good shot on Rapids. It was a close 1v3. But as I digress and go back to it, Fire Nice, they had tunnel vision. As soon as Xavi rotated, they saw 3v2 and they took their opportunity right away. So good job to Rapids to move it in there and picking up some quick kills. Yeah, well done from Rapids. And like I said, that's a guy that I'm going to be looking at. Rapids knows how to capitalize off of moments. And I think that comes back to his 1v uh, spot in escalation. He's used to being on his own, but that means because he's by himself, he's got to adjust very quickly to what's being thrown at him, which gives him great value here on Tomb Execution. First Blood hasn't been drawn just yet. It's getting close, though. Nash relatively weak. Going for the push. He will fall. And that should give Team Queso the edge. But Toxic is coming back for revenge. But that team pickup wasn't the play. And Rapids Rapids will fall, and Team Queso will take a quick round two to bring it 1-1. Yeah, the revive probably wasn't the play in that situation. He needed to fight and put out some more damage for his other teammate who was, uh, you know, 
moving in there from the flank side. So just couldn't get it done. Ultimately, that was a great job from Team K. So uh, good teamwork, you know, being close to each other because they initially needed to get the revise for themselves to, be able to make that play happen. So, uh, you know, both squads playing it close here towards the middle. And as we kick off this round, you see a lot of focus on Nash yeah. and Sleeper looking to make a play on him right away. But he got stopped by a flash. Toxic one to move in on Shavi mm. and Shavi hits the rap shot 3v3. Shavi recovers for a second kill. It's a 2v2 as Solar picks up one in the middle and as crystallizes on a flank, you see Fire Nice is pinched, but in a forced their way out of this bad position. They don't allow Shavi to fully heal, but he does have the snipe. He creates space, misses the first shot. It's a 2v2 all oh. squared up. Shavi misses that point blank. Gonna back up again, try to work this power weapon as they do have the advantage in a situation. Javi's going for the ace. He's picked up the first two and he's going for the others. Respect to Crystallize though, picks up another. You got teammates for a reason. You got to put stats aside. And Chavi, the true hero in this round, like I said, picking up the first two and he's going to go ahead and hopscotch on Rapids and let his old teammate know, look, check it out. I'm on the better team at least for today. That's two rounds in a row, but he missed a lot of snipes. Some point blank says you mentioned before. Does that maybe lessen the value of the clutch here. Oh, nah, he's still clutched up. Like, you know, right here, he gets a big double kill to open up the round. Then he hits the body shot for when it matters. You know, Crystallize cleans it up, but hey, it's a team effort, and he did what his team needed to in that round for them to be up two to one. You love to see it. Two to one. Team Queso leading the way. Team Queso last round was a bit, you know, passive aggressive. They were lancering up the start. This time they're meeting head on, much akin to what we saw in the first couple of rounds. A lot of blood being spilled. Crystallized. Last one alive in a 1v3. Tough spot to be made even tougher as he gets focus fired by F and I. And 22 seconds later, round four is done. We're tied up two to two. All right. It's anybody's game. No one able to kind of get any leeway whatsoever. Xavi is the most lethal player in this lobby thus far throughout four rounds. I don't see the strategy the strategy changing up to kick off this one, but the one thing that we did see um, was Team K. So last time they were on the side, they put a lot of focus on Nash there in the middle, and we're seeing that again. But Sleeper's receiving some of that same attention, Taylor, as they're both squared up, looking to move in for that 1v1. Nash stunned, but nice. Solar... Make it a play on the flank. Nice. He'll find three, wow. and that's the round. That is around 17 quick seconds. F and I has come roaring back to match rounds two and three. That team case of one uh, in conjunction of each other. Obviously, that's two and away four. Fire and ice. Love to see a replay here. Solar so confidently pushing up on that right side. Goes into problems, sees an opportunity to take down one and then finish up the third. Excellent job from him. And that was just Solar seeing an opportunity, taking it. And uh, that's all muscle memory. Well done. Pure confidence. You love to see it. Bit of an audible, though, Blaze. Team Queso this time around, sending Sleeper for the Torque Bow. This is the first time we've seen a Torque Bow play. Ooh, but he gets out in the nick of time, even with the double Lancer. He misses his first bow, and everyone stays alive on the side of Fire and Ice. Also, but Xavi gets to snipe as well. So F and I, they need to find a kill in a spawn quickly because they're getting pressed by two different power weapons. Rapid is being focused from two different angles and F and I, they are in a terrible spot. Kudos to Team Queso, but can they get the kills they need? That's one down. That's two down. Two cleanups come through. It's a man advantage for Team Queso. Nash will find one, but now Fire Nice is going to have to slow it down a bit, Taylor. Yeah, no choice. 3v2. They kind of just got to peek out opportunities. So that fast. torque bow just about got choppy, but in the end, problems also as the last one locked up. Well done. Good torque bow play. Curious if we do see a bit of a reaction from Fire and Ice in terms of maybe counteracting that torque bow push. But for Team Queso, the first team to truly make a change in the initial. Yeah, and it, and it paid off for them. Um, also in that situation, once that bow is picked up, F and I, they need to either find a quick kill on one of those players in the middle or they need to come out with the opposite power weapon. And they did neither, so... It was only a matter of time as Fire and Ice, uh, sorry, as Team Queso just kind of spread out around them. In this round, it is going to be a 2v2 fight down at the bow. Sleefer connects with some good shots. He'll get the help from Crystallize. Nash holding his ground, but for how long? Not too long. That's going to be a 4v1 now for Toxic and Team Queso. They're going to get themselves another round on the board, Taylor in style. 
take the lead once again, puts them two away from taking the victory and leading 2-0 in the series, heading into Escalation, which is going to be on Harbor. Again, a great map for both of these rosters just based on their play style. This series is, in my opinion, perfect when it comes to Team Queso and Fire and Ice across all five maps. But for Fire and Ice, they've done a great job at answering back and responding when Team Queso does get a win. Will they be able to do so here? Battle for Torco underway. Sleeper leading the charge. He missed that first shot before, but he got the second. He's got to watch his flank. Oh, he gets flanked. Perfect job from Solar. That's the second time we've seen in the rounds here on two. Solar make a big flank and a big move. Now Shavi's going to have to make a big move with this snipe. Just barely dodges that bow. It's going to be a man advantage for Fire and Ice. Crystallize trying to take his 1v1, but Toxic has the nades to slow down these players and trap them in a corner. But this is actually good for Xavi. Him being in this corner, he has multiple uh, angles to make a play in. Miss, just misses that shot. Had to thread the needle between his teammates. He will connect on a body in the back, and you will see hmm. Team Queso flip the numbers, Taylor. They find themselves too, and now they get to back up and play a little defense if they choose to. And it's looking like that is going to be the play. And Blaze, the first time we've seen an up top fight. So this is going to be a lot of fun to see not only how Nash is going to respond to Chavi's snipe, but also problems crystallizing Solar on the opposite end for Fire and Ice. It is imperative that Nash gets a connection and brings it to a 2v2. But it's going to be easier said than done, obviously, because Nash with the Torque Bow is powerful, but he's got to charge it up where Chavi, he has that instant shot, that instant kill potential once Nash charges and then ultimately goes for the peak. So not going to be easy at all for Fire and Ice, but keeping Team Queso at Bay and bringing it back four to four is going to be hugely important to keep this map alive. Enemy contact! Ooh. It was close, but both squads started to make a dash down to the bottom portion of the map. The snipe uh, new bowls will be up. And it will. Oh my! He actually gets Shabby! <laughs> what a oh, bowl! And he will have uh, six more to work with, five more to work with. Still a 2v2, two snipes in the hands of problems. The shock is oh, down and he connects whoa. to the ball. And Crystallize gets the down. What a snipe from problems. Oh, that, that was Jeez. a snipe from hell. Are you kidding me? One thing about he Split hit the right 2, one. brother. He hit the well. First off, Nash hit the right one, taking down Chavi. That was step number one for F and I. But problems hitting that first shot. Jesus. That really put the odds back in Team Queso's favor. That snipe was beautiful. What level of snipe was that, Blaze? I know you got three books out. Wh which book was that snipe covered in? Oh, that was definitely expert level. You know, he didn't hit the concrete. He was in a difficult situation. <laughs> it was a lot happening on the screen from the shots from the so book three. fire. But he still hit this shot under pressure like it was like it was uh, just watching football on a Sunday morning. It was easy. Okay, you mm. do it any time. Easy like the shots that problem are getting. He's getting from the middle to 3v3. Still putting out a lot of damage. And Shavi's able to get this snipe and drop back as well. Okay, 3v3. Like I said before, Torque Bow versus Sniper. Chavi. Sniper and Solar with the Torque Bow himself. Now, Solar is deadly with that Torque Bow. Maybe even deadlier taking down problems. But answered back is Sleeper. Will exit Sleeper. But look at a no, no! That's a team kill. Solar takes down Rapids and puts himself in a very difficult spot. Chavi trying to line up the snipe. But either way, Solar can't break through. And who knows if things would have been different there if the team kill did not come in play. But... Hey, it happened. That's just the way it went down. Two, six to three. Team Queso will lead this series 2-0, forcing Fire and Ice to answer back in map number three. Harbor escalation. It's not going to be easy, Blaze, but it's something they must do. Map number three is going to be coming around very shortly. It's going to be Harbor escalation. Don't miss out. We'll be right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Gears Pro League Split 2, Day 6. Two maps down in our first series of the day. And uh, obviously, Team Queso leading 2-0. to zero. Well done from them. They not only win map number one reactor, 300 to 240, but two 6-3, to three, which puts us into map three, Harbor Escalation, with Team Queso the potential to break away from the bottom seven and potentially also be that much closer to avoiding relegation. Blaze, with two maps being down, what are some positive and negatives that you have notice to take away from Team Queso and FNI? Well, oh, you know, when it comes down to the positive and negative, you know, the positive Team Queso is that they know how to close games, okay? 
and also as well um you know after they kind of you know get get through that early game get a few rounds with their opponent okay have a few rotations with them they kind of get they get used to them and they make good adjustments rather if that's playing a little bit tighter playing a little bit faster you know we, we we've seen it being made by them so far so you know they're making adjustments on the fly to figure out how to win this matchup on the flip in for f and i you know they got to figure out ways how to keep their advantages okay because it hasn't been working out for them you know when they have a, a hundred point lead in control they need to be able to you know have the communication to rotate early get set up make those fights as hard as possible for their opponent in the late game um a, a, as well as keep their man advantages in execution and advantages and execution. I agree with that. But given a hard time to the man advantages was problems. That man tore it up for Team K. So he went 10 and 5, 3 assists, 12K damage done with two first bloods. Problems was, as I always say, causing problems on the battlefield, brother. He has continued to impress me, Blaze, throughout Split 2 and truly is uh, an up and coming player that could make a good name for himself. Even whether it be with Team Queso or maybe future rosters, who knows what his career is going to hold. But problems with his first split, at least that I know of, coming in a pro league, I've been impressed with him. Yeah, no, nah, I've been impressed with him as well. You know, um, coming out of here in pro league and kind of making a name for yourself to, to start, you know, uh, you, you really didn't have one before. People knew of you, but so far he's doing a good job, okay? Yeah. He's been making some big plays here for the team. And, um, you know, we watched him come up with a lot of big double kills during that first map for the squad. Yep. And so we'll see if he can continue that in execution. When it comes down to respawn, he is definitely a player that, uh, you know, pairs well with, with Xavi. So pairs well with Xavi and allows, creates those openings for Crystallize and Sleeper that they're looking for. Once again, uh, it's a bit of a stat line when it comes to this series. You know, I brought up Rise before, and I'm going to bring up Rise again. Last time that they played on Harbor, both of these rosters, it was against Rise. Fire and Ice went the distance. Another uh, final round went to round number nine. They ended up losing, and like you said, Blaze, just a quote, an L is still an L, no matter how close that it was. Whether it came down to one round, whether it came down to one point or one kill, an L is still an L. And Team Queso also took an L to Rise. It went to a round number eight. So very close when it comes to the round by round basis. But that does speak volumes about both of these rosters. We know if there's any map that you're going to pick to play against Rise when it comes to Escalation Harbor is that map that you try to avoid at all costs. So I much uh, respect Team Queso and F and I Blaze for choosing Harbor, one that they knew was going to be an uphill battle, but clearly they feel comfortable on. Yeah, yeah, it is a map in which they feel comfortable on, Taylor. We had to pull it back there for you guys, folks. Uh, you know, couldn't get it loaded in right away, but don't worry, we'll hop right back into that one momentarily. Okay. Um, but, you know, I'm excited to watch both of them play Harbor Escalation. I do think Team Queso is the better um, Escalation squad here, especially with mm -hmm. the veterans in which they have on a team. But uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out when we hop into the map. Yeah, the only thing about Team Queso that I mentioned before, same thing on Reactor, uh, same thing going to be here for Harbor, is their ability to get a little bit over-aggressive instead of pumping the brakes and playing the long game. They just want to close out the rounds as quickly as they possibly can. I want to see them flex their ability to remain a little bit patient. You live by the sword, you die by the sword, but oftentimes Team Queso mm -hmm. will die by the sword because of their over-aggression. Pull out that shield a little bit and don't be scared to flex your muscles defensively. So if Team Queso could do that here, it would show maturity, but also their ability to be be able to obviously get better as split two goes along. I don't want to see yeah. the same team queso from day one to the end of split two heading into the major. We need to see a progression nope. and they need to be more passive. Yeah, we do need to see them progress. Okay. They, they've had a few different rosters and that could definitely um, play issue and get into full form. But you know, they're, they're making these rosters with intentions to be better. Okay. Right. Unless a player leaves granted, but I'm pretty sure um, they feel like they've made upgrades after each season. And, with that being said, uh, it just comes down to, to winning these games and closing them out. We'll see if Team Queso is going to be able to get that quick speed to play at that that high pace to some of our other top teams. And it starts with matchups like Fire Nice. And so far with them being up 2-0, they look good. Taylor, but I will say they, they haven't been winning these rounds dominantly. 
They have not, but that was a great start, though, in terms of fire and ice. And well done to keep that spacing, speaking in regards to Solar, but also great job from Chavi. He's going to be opposite of Nash this time around. I mentioned Rapids being that guy in the 1v spots, but I guess they're going to switch it up a little bit, make some adjustments, fire and ice. I like that, but I also think Rapids brings great benefit when he's in the 1v spot, but hey, maybe they know something I don't know. Still, even nobody's been able to get the neutral despite Chavi winning the fight against Nash on B. He still had to back off because of the Lancer fire from Fire and Ice on that winch because they won it. But either way, we do finally see Team Queso getting the cap, and they officially will have it. All right, now Solar hitting some, some good shots in here. But as he gets taken down, Taylor, and with B Hill already being capped up, you will see that trip cap domination being threatened. Sleeper's going to move in. Puts a good shot on Toxic, which is going to back him up towards the spine. Good play for him to be able to get a quick revive and get back into this heal, but they won't be able to make it in time. That's a great first round coming out from Team Queso and showing them who's boss. Yeah, excellent job from Team Queso, especially because they lost that winch fight. So you got to give a lot of credit to Chavi for holding his ground opposite of Nash in that 1v spot for the neutral and still keeping the refresh from Fire and Ice at bay. Excellent work coming out from them. Speaking of which, Rapids and Nash, both players who are currently sitting without a single kill sleeper with one kill himself, but that damage is excellent at 2,500. We'll see how round two is going to end up unfolding, but I did like to see problems opposite of uh, opposite of uh, who was it of, of solar i think problems in solar are excellent players to be in a 1v uh opposite of winch man because those two guys are explosive for the roster in terms of uh, kda no they really are and they always can make the play for the team now solar will be able to push through up top Sleeper's gonna back up all the way, and Solar, once he even saw, once he saw Sleeper take the angle, he knew that he, I might as well just back up now and take another fight because I won't be able to get through that Lancer fire. And it was a good call for him, hoping the squad get the first kill, but it turns into a 1v1 at the winch, and it's still a 1v1 down low at B. We see Toxic will win that battle against Ooh, Crystallize, but Sleeper with a Botox headshot fade away, and then he's back in position to help his teammate down low. That was nasty, brother. He did that even with the meat shield in front of him and still connected onto the head. Excellent work. Team Queso cruising at the moment if they can win the 2v2, which they do in style. But now, do they play defense? Do they pressure up? Well, the answer is going to be the latter. They're going to pressure up, blaze, and commit everything for the domination. And it's looking like they will. They should be able to get it with them acquiring these two quick kills. Two more to go. These players won't be able to make it up the stairs. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> they move in and they eat them up. But one player left, of course, is Sleeper. Can he handle a 1v3? Stays at the edge, moves up. His flash won't connect. He gets it down. Wow, moves in for another meat shield. Oh, Botox blocks, steps up, whoa, gets another true. Stays in, dips, dives, ducks, cuts wow. back, and finally taken out. But look at his team set up, man. Matt, they're like, come on, Captain. Just spawn wow. up and watch watch our six. Bro, that was excellent, Blaze. Sleeper holding his ground like he did. Allowed Team Queso to come off the refresh, the respawn, and set up defensively for F and I's final push. And I say final push because if they fell this one, that's pretty much going to be all she wrote, Blaze. But it looks like they're making some headway already going on to B. But there's some problems in the name of problems. Getting it down on Toxic and Nash. They end up standing up. But the Boltox shot, uh, shots are clean. And Sleeper refuses to back down. He worked too hard holding F and I at bay as they were respawning up. He's not giving this round away by any means, and he's not going to make it easy, even holding his ground, even in the corner, when all look lost, and Solar can do nothing but just dance around. It's going to be over. 250 to 110, an excellent round on the back of Sleeper. Wow. Man, you know, and it, it started with his very first play, preventing the, um, the push down the ramp. Top Stern, the, the wide angle he took was perfectly timed. Stop two players from pushing in, and he moved in, gets a double, rotates to the home hill, helps the squad pick up two, wins a 2v2, and I think another 1v1. It was just, he was doing it all. Yeah. Here's Battle Cry. <laughs> 
I'll be letting him know. Sleeper, yeah, that, that man. And you pointed him out, brother. And you said he'd be an excellent bouncer. I'm starting to believe it because that guy is checking IDs and everybody either has a fake one or they're just not old enough to get into a club. And Sleeper, he's not letting anyone pass through. Fire and Ice, hugely aggressive. But Sleeper, once again on your screen, looking to make the plays. But he's got to back off and make some adjustments because the fight is going to be lost. Toxic isn't going to slow down. He's going to go over towards A and try to secure the home hill of Team Queso. And that forces Chavi in a must-win spot to hold on. But actually, I digress and take it back. Player 2 Toxic didn't go for the home hill. He backtracks and goes over to B to help Rapids to take down Chavi. Honestly, still a great play. Getting that neutral is a lot easier to hold on to than the home to home. Yeah, luckily, you know, for the Team Queso fan, Sleeper was able to get down low and help his teammate um, win that first fight. By, by doing that, he forced the players to not go for the home hill and forced them to have to capture that B which allowed Team Queso to respawn, get in position, and, and not have to defend against their home here early into the game. And look at this, we're at a tight game now. So their early lead paid off for them, and now they're back on the offensive, looking to push through mid-map, crystallized, distracting three players. He's finally taken out, but the B-Hill is capped. Now they got to deal with this man disadvantage, and that's Team Queso being a disadvantage. Problems on the flank, and Sleeper with a retro lancer putting out a lot of damage, Taylor. A lot of damage indeed. You mentioned problems obviously on a flank, but so was Nash and Toxic, and they were inching their way forward to getting on all three hills. Obviously, problems still making some issues on the opposite end. He'll back up. That gives longevity to the round for Team Queso, only for a bit, and uh, well, he even gets it down on Nash. Excellent job. F and I will take the two to one momentarily. Team Queso, though, the cavalry is set up to make one final charge once again. Three man push into Toxic and Rapids. Problems being on which is going to be great, especially for Chavi to get on the neutral solar though is in that pocket that's hard to take him down so problems has to get him out of the way and b is still being capped by chavi who is currently down and he might get picked back up and he does actually get back into the fight so excellent recovery from team queso just in the nick of time where three points separate the two in fact they're going for a domination it is a domination that's gonna be stopped momentarily by uh solar on overextension as he's taken out domination will continue but i think it's going to be brief again unless problems can find a way to get one more kill actually there you go that was the kill that he needed i thought he had to get at least two but in the end it will be team queso up three to zero and and so far like i said they're looking like the best escalation team in this uh series yep. and um you know fire nice they're gonna have to find a way to step up and, and really shut sleeper down yeah yeah, Sleeper's been a nuisance, brother. Sleeper has been a nuisance, which I, I appreciate seeing that. I really do, because Sleeper, you know, a bit understated uh, when it came down to uh, control. He had the least amount of uh, damage done um, for his team. Then you look at his performance and execution. Again, the least amount of damage, the least amount of kills, but he is flexing his muscles. Is that better when it comes to escalation? Which you pointed that out, boys. Sleeper, he knows his escalation, and it is truly showing its full form here in this matchup. And, and I'll tell you what the counter to Sleeper is, it's um, having a strong front line because if you take out his front line players, his, right. his, the, 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 uh, the all-stars, yep. at that point, you know, he got numbers stacked up against them. But when it comes down towards, uh, you know, you trying to outstrat this team, out-rotate them, he'll be able to cut you off and make a dope play as we're going to oh. see problems able to hold off two. <laughs> you're going to outwork them. What? Outsmart him, man. Look at that play. Excellent job. Guys. Man, that shock was perfect. That shock was... It, it, that was the perfect player to go for the domination to on the opposite home hill. If he doesn't have that shock, he doesn't win that, in my opinion, in that 1v2. Maybe he does. Let me not discredit him, but that he shock doesn't. was literally everything. You know, it's a, we won't say he, he won it to 1v2. You know, it's not like it was a 1v3, so it definitely is possible, but... You know, it's still clutch that he that he had that shock in his back pocket to work with and, and close out that round. So good job to Team Queso. And if Fire Knights wants to come back into this one, Taylor, they're going to have to pick up some kills up against Problem and Xavi at the front line. They're going to have to. They really are. This winch fight has just gone to the way of Team Queso more often than not. And it's because that man up top sleeper who's been on the flank laying down the Lancer fire, which he's going to continue to do. So you mentioned having a strong front line for sleeper. The way to nerf him is to take that front line down and isolate sleeper. Well, in this case, round number five, Fire and Ice finds a way to do that and might be able to gain an edge here. 
Yeah, and I and I think they do have the edge with the hill captain. Another man advantage. Problems actually rotates down low to get the down. His teammate may actually get revived here off the respawn. You see player six moves in and he gets to Xavi at the nick of time. So that's going to keep Team Queso in, in um, this man advantage. And now they just need to push up and use their numbers, Taylor. It's a 3v2. Toxic getting some good shots out. And that's some great pre-fire from him to get the leg up on Sleeper, get that kill. And now he can push through. And it's going to be Fire Nice looking to get a home hill setup after that back of, uh, after that double kill that problems caused for the Fire Nice player. Oh. That was an excellent double kill as well. I, I thought for sure he was going to die there. It looked like Solar had all the advantage in the world, but I guess not the advantage at all. Excellent job from Problems, who continues to be a high-impact player. Great uh, Lancer fire from Sleeper. 1v2, make that a, a 3v2 as Sleeper pushes up. The rest of his boys are going to be behind. Sleeper will drop, but he's going to be back on his feet, leaving Toxic by himself in a 3v1. Make that a 3v9. Excellent recovery from Team Queso. They're going to go for the overextension. They're in a perfect to crystallize wins this 1v2. This could end in a way of a domination, but he falls. F and I gives himself a bit of longevity, but now you got to put it back into the court of Sleeper. If he pushes up for the neutral, this can still end. Fire and Ice is in a really awkward position where they're forced to win a couple of different fights. Ah, uh, they're forced to win a lot of fights. That's one, and that's two. That keeps them in the round for now. As the flash connects on Sleeper, Rapids is going to send him back to the respawn. So two heals should be getting capped for Fire and Ice, but one of the players rotated up top right away to help out the squad, so they only have the neutral heal, but it was a smart play by Solar because right. he was able to get there and help his teammate uh, take a 2v1, which is going to allow them to get the points in which they need to get the lead back in their favor. And now Nash will join the fight, but here comes the push from Team K. So Solar moves up, hits two good shots. Actually puts some great shots on the second target, gets the revive on his teammate, recess the fight, stays alive. But Xavi with a big angle, where's his pressure? They got the down on Nash from across the map, and that allows Xavi to kind of focus in and make it a 2v2 fight, Over. having a height advantage. Some solid kills and some very impactful kills, because that's going to end the series. Yeah, that's going to end the series. I, I'm, I'm dumbfounded that Team Queso was able to push up that ramp basically for free because all of the uh, attention from Fire and Ice was on Sleeper. That was it. Meanwhile, Chavi was living rent free at the top, able to go through and obviously uh, he panned out very well. Man, that is a tough, tough sight to see, Blaze, but a sight nonetheless. Team Queso, a flawless performance. One of the quickest series we've had in quite some time. The broadcast is only uh, an hour and 16 minutes old blaze all right you count in the 20 minute pre-show at this point this series was about 40 or so minutes team queso had their way with f and i yeah they they truly did they they were just dipping them dipping them map <laughs> after map round after round and just dipping that chip okay to victory so <laughs> dipping the chip all right <laughs> and so uh but but team queso man you know we, we saw him kind of warm up in those first two maps right. they were figuring out their opponent but once they got that intel and execution and control it came in escalation and it was a solid 5 0. Also, you know, we know that escalation is really going to weed out the, uh, the men from the boys. Yes, yes, it will. Sleeper, so much value. My Lord, Sleeper made that match his, or at least that map number three, because like I said, he didn't have the best performance when it came to control or execution. But, I mean, undeniably, the MVP of map number three, Sleeper has played even all the way back to the Escalation days when that was only, you know, the only competitive game mode play. This play from Problems, by the way, was beautiful. Saving that shock to isolate those two members out, that ended in the way of domination. There was a lot of fantastic and valuable plays from not only Problems, but also on the other side from Sleeper. Uh, Chavi had his uh, way with uh, some players. Crystallized was still there, more so prevalent in the control and execution, but really impressed with the way Team Queso just played that. And I think it's important that they win the Series 3-0 Blaze because, they, again, we talked about 7 through 10, how they're trying to avoid relegation, how they were all deadlocked going into this series, you know, at 1-4 and four record. But for Team Queso to beat FNI in the way that they did just now does separate them from the bottom of the pack and puts them now into the middle of the pack when it comes to the Pro League team. So I think Team Queso's value uh, just skyrocketed up, in my opinion. I would love to see them play against some top-level teams in the future. Yeah, I agree with you, and their value did skyrocket a bit. It's a just a bit, you know. They got a good win up against Fire Nice, but, you know, it was one of those wins that had to be very convincing, 
Okay. Yep, it, it needed to. Us look at their record and say, hey, you guys had a tough start. Okay. Right. An unlucky start, but you are still one of these mid tier teams, top six, you know, uh, you know, major level squads. And that's what they're looking like right now. And, you know, I, I think with uh, Fury One maybe being above them or, or somebody else, but we'll sure. see how the power rankings, you know, lie when we're done with the pro league. But congratulations to Team K. So, you know, they got it done. Yeah, they get it done. Fury One is uh, currently two and three. They do play another day. They don't play today, but yeah, two and three. I, so we'll see at the standings at the end of the day, but no, Team Queso looking even more impressive. I think it's the way that they won, but also the way that they looked winning, and I like the mm -hmm. fact that we did see some star set of players, aka Sleefer, perform where you expect them to uh, perform, but also the slain power come out from Chavi and Problems. They handled that very well and uh harbor seems to be again a great map for them which i think is uh, an excellent point because harbor isn't played too often uh so oh. when it is played certain teams you know either rise up and are fantastic on it or they're just not good at it right so if we do see harbor in the rotation for team k so i think it could be a huge positive thing place yeah nah it could be a positive thing and it's going to be a fun matchup okay it's going to yeah. be a fun game um to to be able to watch especially if we see it in, in a rebel one pk PK yes. series? Oh, that's going to be a banger because we know that's Raver's territory. So uh -huh. it don't matter who go up against them from Rebel. Yeah. Rebel PK, man, Blaze. That's going to be an excellent one. And speaking of which, that's coming up next. Both Latin American teams, and they always make sure to perform when they match up against each other. This is one you definitely don't want to miss out on. Get the conversation going in chat. Let us know what you think about it. Either way, Rebel PK coming up after the break.